Right. And so you got to, and so why is it that everybody is, is um, submitting and complying to him? Mm. So even like, you know, I mean, I, I understand, I don't, I don't wish no other rapper to get wrapped up and do no some stupid shit to be fucked up in the game. No, don't do that, but ignore him. Got you, got you. You know what I'm saying? Like ignore him because it's the kids' music, but it's 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 what it's what's called trendy, right? Mm -hmm. And so trendy is like when you see somebody like for for an example, this 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 young woman years ago told me that she was like, Yo, you got to dress classic as opposed to trendy. And I'm like, what do you mean? She was like. You see those Parasuco jeans that everybody wearing? She was like, in another year, they're going to go out of style, right? But they're dated. So when you see the jean and you try to wear it again, oh, you're wearing two years ago, mm, mm, right? right? Which keeps the consumerism going. Like, you got to keep buying the new shit. Absolutely. That's trends, right? Right. Whereas opposed to a, a label like Polo, it's a classic label. Like, it's made... For forever, yeah, yeah. and it's, it has different genres, genres of, of, of clothing. It got sportswear, it got this and that, that. So what happened is urban sportswear. We had a hold on it for a moment, right? You had uh, cross colors, right? You know, and and most people are not aware that most of these guys piggybacked off the last one. So cross colors put Carl Kanai on, mm. right? Carl Kanab comes through and he opens up the way for Inichi and Mecca and all of these and other labels. Shit, Fubu. Yeah. Right. Fubu. Fubu. And so what happened was the, the industry, the fashion industry saw that their labels were being pushed away and they had to, to, to they had to comply. So that's when Ralph Lauren came out with Polo Sport. Right, right. RL Sport. Right. These, all of these subsidiary, you know, lines to compete with the Fubu and the Mecca and all of that. So then it became now we're back to the to the to the fashion houses of, of Italy. Gucci, mm. Louis, Fendi. You can't even go in that store. What are you worrying about that shit for? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Right? That's and, so, and so it's a, it's really just a commercialism thing. So hip hop, we talked about that before. Puff is a is a is a genius because he saw the direction that the music was going in. It's not going in music, it's going in advertisement. Mm. So he put it so you gotta pay pay attention. So he starts dissolving the record label. And now he got this liquor. So now he's he's managing these groups, but they're Ciroc boys. Absolutely. So now in their songs, they they're promoting commercials. Absolutely. So when, at, whereas normally you got to pay for a commercial on the radio, mm -hmm. he got you playing the song on the radio. It's a commercial and you're going to pay him for the spins. Yes, yes, yes. Right? So he's getting his money and he's using the rappers to promote his liquor. So now he puts them on a tour. It's a Ciroc tour. I put a banner in the back. Right. I get a couple of uh, uh, promoters to promote some parties and they're going to sell the liquor and yep, give yep, it out. Yep. Mm -hmm. And before you know it now, Ciroc is it's a household name. Absolutely. Absolutely. As a liquor, it doesn't have that much time in the mm -hmm. liquor game. For, for it to uh, 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 expand that fast. Yeah, exactly. So now people, I don't know if y'all remember, it was a time back I said something about Jack Daniels. Yes. So now they got the Uncle Nemus. No, yes. We were talking about that. Yeah, we, we did a we, show we, we on did, that. We talked about that. Right. Yes, so yes. They're using that because the Jack Daniels label is going to have to be dissolved in a minute because the creek is drying up. Mm. They ain't telling you that. Oh. <laughs> the creek that the, where, they make the, where they make the whiskey from is drying up. Ah. So if you purchase Jack Daniels now, several years from now, those It'll bottles be will be worth money because there's not going to be any more Jack Daniels. Yeah, right. They're going to put on, all their on. money. Let's clap that up, right. shit. That's a funk flex bomb. That's a gem. <laughs> if I had the funk flex bomb, I'd drop that. So we're gonna go with the clap. You I'm about to buy a drag game. So because and so now they're steering it into the Uncle Nemus thing. So and they're so transitioning. Has, absolutely. They're smart. They smart. They transition it and then they give you the story because the lady who took it over, yo, beautiful story on how absolutely. Yo. So now they give you the backstory. So now you feel connected. Yeah. It worked. It worked. It shit worked. <laughs> it worked. So they're going to dissolve it into from Jack Daniels into this label, and now it's going to become a household label. And when you think of whiskey, you're going to think, oh, get the uncle or whatever, Nemus or whatever yeah. it is, right? Mm. That's marketing. That's marketing. So you see these dudes, the dude Kenny Burns that's promoting it is from Puff Team. They yes, he is. He yes, comes out of that team. Yeah. Yes, yes. So you got to pay attention to how they selling everything, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's, so you got to, uh, even in terms of, this guy, Takashi 69 he got the tattoos on the face and all that. So what's on television? Black Ink. Right. They promote in tattoo shops. Mm, mm. Right? 
This is it's an advertisement game. They understand that now, mm. right? So the music, the reason why we're not getting a hold of the music is because we're still looking at the old paradigm of a record label. Why do you need a record label? There's no such thing as records anymore. Right, right. Well, you need Facts. a record label for and there's no more records. Right? Facts. Facts. So you're, you're looking to get signed to a label for them to do what you can do on your on own. Your own. That's why they did the net neutrality thing. They shut down the the, the, the Instagram and the Facebook because people making money on it. Too much, too it's, much. Just like the gold rush. Right, right, right. Yes. Right? Yes. So, you know, Takashi's decline is just another gimmick. It'll go away. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you, can you think, can you see this 15 years from now? No, no. Obviously no. not, yeah. So now we're going to ask you a question because you got here. Just a little black man tarnish. That's all right. Yeah, I had to get some Yeah, you already know, coming from Jersey. Yeah, and all yeah. That. Um, what do you think? Did you listen to the new Kanye project? And then we're gonna get into the Pusha T shit. But you know, same shit. It was promotion. He did all of that TMZ shit to sell his album. He did, had the most streams. He got everybody in the huff. What? So now you want to know what he's talking about? And he's like, oh yeah, I turned TMZ into a smack DVD. He sure oh. enough did say that. <laughs> oh, he's smart. Mm. And he and he's got a label. He got good music. So it's Pusha T himself, him and Kid Cudi, him Kid Cudi, that's tomorrow. Nas, Nas, and and uh, Tiana, Tiana Taylor, Taylor. Yep. who he got her own show on VH1 right after Love and Hip Hop and all of that. Yep. So Son, he, it's marketing, he man. He smoked that. It's marketing. Yeah. Like everybody got in the huff. You can't be serious. First of all, his mother is a professor, a black studies professor. Mm. Let's be clear. He's born conscious. He's mm -hmm. been talking that shit before anybody. Mm -hmm. He got Jay-Z in them to even. When you see Jay-Z with the unplugged, with the red, black, and green on in the chair. Kanye got him in the That's it. It's all, it's all, they, they, what they do is, they're doing it right now with the conscious shit. Mm. Yes, yes. They're doing it with the conscious. Oh, stay woke, woke. And they're using these buzzwords and all of that, right? To, so that they can acquire the culture. And then regulate it. And then regulate it and sell that shit back to you. So now, before you know it, niggas will be buying black soap and it'll be a white company. Right. Oh, Absolutely. I gotta get that black soap, right? Mm. I gotta get the jasmine you know, or I gotta get the yoni. Shit. All of that is gonna be, they're gonna get, get a hold of it because they see how much money shit. is. Yeah. Facts. You feel me? And so Facts. it's marketing. And so the one thing that people gotta understand is the whole world is a stage in the market. Everybody's lying. Mm. Right? Mm. It's a good lie because I got the best tomatoes. It, ain't, it might not be the best, but I got to sell them. Facts. Facts. Right? Facts. So in, 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 in my culture, they talk about, they, they refer to the world as a giant market. Mm. And people are, are uh, haggling and bargaining. In the market. Absolutely. To get ahead in life. Absolutely. And so Networking. Forth. Who do you know? Networking. Who do you know? that you can plug me into that I know. Yes. Who, you got the good Juju man, let me go see him. Mm. It costs money to get the good Juju man. After a while, once his name <clears throat> becomes a certain thing, then becomes exclusive. Look, I can't see you because I gotta eat. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You feel me? And so, and so, the whole world is a marketing plan. Mm. They selling everything. And we are in the stage, we in America, it's the consumer and capital of Sell, the world. Get these Sell shirts. Urban, Urban X TV. You feel me? Urban like, X I didn't want to see. You gotta sell something, man. Get these shirts. And you know who put me onto that? I'm gonna keep it humble. You know I gotta give it up to my people. A.A. Rashid. Yeah. Shout out to A.A. Rashid. Shout out to the God. A.A. Yeah. A.A. Rashid was like, yo, you gotta monetize it. You have to have product, merchandise to sell people. Cause I, you know, I don't sell nothing. You come get a reading and keep it pushing. I ain't right. selling no shit. I can right. sell you some herbs and put some shit in. Oh, I pray. Bag of voodoo, bag of voodoo rocks and shit. Right? You feel me? <laughs> like these voodoo rocks, nigga. <laughs> Top notch. You can get these rocks. You can get these rocks. So, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And so, you know, I got a bad temper, so I can't be selling you no bullshit. Cause you run down on me, we gonna get into a squabble. Just like that. Like, Yo, you sold me so I mean, we gonna get the squabble. Right, 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 I ain't right. gonna try to haggle with you. You know what I mean? It ain't gonna hurt me. Fuck out of here with that shit. So I don't do that shit. So that's why I'm doing the book thing. So everybody's asking me when the book the book is in edit right now. Oh, beautiful. See, beautiful. Again, I'm not into just selling product. What I put my name on, I believe in. Well, you know something? I feel the same way, King. And that's why we limit what it is that we do sell. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure if I sell you a book or a shirt, it's something that we really believe in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that you don't come back to me or you feel 
Uh, we one of those hustlers. Oh, these niggas is hustling. I don't ever want to be involved. That's that's my dog Bowser. He he likes to be on the show from time to time. Absolutely, the guy good luck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it, it's the same thing. You know, I'm gonna make sure there's something of quality of value that we're selling you, mm -hmm. so you know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Got a release date, man? Um, nah, not even. I, I did. I'm just. I'm. You know, I'm in the wind. Okay. You know what I'm saying I'm I'm always moving. I'm in and out the country. Um, Let's talk yeah. about that too. Uh, I know that you uh, you on your way back to Cuba. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. it's like eight or nine times already. Um, is each experience different, or now time. you've just? Oh, I'm saying I'm been comfortable. Right. When I, you know, when when I the first time I was there, I was there for 21 days. That's mm. short of a month. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like I was there, hi, hi, and then I left. Like, I really got to see people. So, you know, you see somebody the first week, they're like, hi. Next thing is like, Next hi. week, they're like, yo, what up? Right, right, right. yeah. Yeah, they're like, are you still here, motherfucker? <laughs> right? So, and so the, the love is genuine. Right. So I'm good over there. Like, when I, you know, it's my gamma. If I go stay in her crib, I'll be, you know, I'm chilling. Yeah. I'm, and so I'm not in a, on a resort. I'm not watching the little shows with the people like, dancing and trying to tell you the culture. Get the fuck out of here with that right, shit. You actually on the <laughs> actually on the grill. Because I see people go to Cuba. And I remember you were doing the interview, you were doing the interview here with my pops. And you were just talking about people like standing next to the vintage cars just for pictures. Or right. doing this just for pictures. They're right. going to go to the Cohiba factory. You know, they're going to yeah. drink a, a mojito. Okay, cool. But what else? I mean, it's not that type of place. Mm. Mm. You know, and every place is not to be exploited by capitalism. See, that's the thing that we got to understand. Every place, some places are just sacred, right? And let the people do what they do. Now, they got the, they've been affected by the capital bug. Them mm -hmm. motherfuckers be selling. They sell everything. Mm -hmm. right? But their way of life is different, right? It's not like DR. So you go out there and ain't girls ain't just like, oh, well, you want to buy some? Nah. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. And and I and I be feeling some kind of way, like dudes be like, oh, I went to Dion. I'm like, yo, you just went and exploited the people. Basically. basically. You over there buying their daughters and you know what I'm saying? You scumbag. Right. What is exactly. that? Exactly. That that's some scumbag shit. <laughs> and that's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. That's a good I, scumbag. I had a whole bunch of dudes, yo, five dollars. I'm like, Diddy over there for five dollars. And I'm like, yeah, that's some scumbag shit. Yeah, because they don't really like you. Right. Right. It's like marrying a stripper. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Did, did she really like you because you got the bag? Yeah. Which, right. one is it? Which one is it? Uh. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so, you know, when they go over there, people want to go over there and exploit. And, you know, our people especially, we have this thing about living lavishly. Mm -hmm. So we want to go somewhere where our money spend a little longer and we can, we can floss on it. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? We go to Jets game and all that shit. She was $10. The fuck yeah. you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because I went to Mexico, right? For the first time, and I was in the bathroom taking a leak, and the guy, you know, he jiggled his ding ding like, you know, hit me with his change, and I didn't have no change, so I reached and I gave him five, and the way he looked at me when I gave him the five dollar bill was like, oh shit. Yeah, he about to stack up. So, the freezer gonna be. So wifey, I tell you, I was diddy. I was giving niggas five dollars. Nigga, you get five. But not just <laughs> you get <a> five. <laughs> Yo, I just started because I didn't understand the significance. Yeah, that that's just a lot of money. That's a lot of bread. Right. You know what I mean? So I was. That was my diddy moment. I spoke to you about my crack dealer moment. That was the diddy moment. I yeah. was letting five. I mean, win. And, and you know, we, it's it's good for us to go and travel the world. But not to go and be at the pool and with the Mai Tai acting like we Rick Ross MMG. Come on, man. Right, right, right. Cut go it. visit the people yeah, and absorb the man. culture. Go, go get the culture and maybe, you know, start a relationship with somebody that you you could send them money once or two, twice a month or something. Mm -hmm. You know, you send them $20, that shit, that shit's bad. Right, absolutely. You absolutely. 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 You know, and, we, and so, you know, Cuba is one of the places, like I said, you, everybody go. Yeah, yeah. You know, I be seeing them there, but I don't even interact with them. Not mm -hmm. even to put them on, because these motherfuckers be trying to act like, like you said, like they did it. Right. You know, when you in Cuba, right? But the thing about Cuba is the money don't spend long out there. Mm -hmm. The money don't spend long. It ain't like DR. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So you take a hundred dollar American bill and you change it into a Cuban comparable dollar, mm -hmm. and they gonna take twenty percent, and you gonna get eighty dollars. Ooh. Okay. 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 Let's and so when they make them see you, they like you got them cooks on you, homeboy. I don't want no face on, homie. Let me get that cook, that uh, comparable dollar. Ah, see, ah. And it's, it's like I said before, it's one of the safest third world countries you ever go to. Ain't nobody gonna book you. Oh, okay, mm. okay. They might hustle you, 
But they ain't going to They ain't going to pull out no knife and be like, give me your wallet and no shit like that. Got you, got you. Feel me? And if they do, it'll be against some pilgrims. Feel me? <laughs> <laughs> they they, they, they cut, I seen them cut the, the, um, the strap for the, the, the pocketbook and take the white lady pocketbook and take yeah, off. And take sandals. Take some sandals. <laughs> niggas hungry. Feel me? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it's, like I said, the, the moving around and all that, I haven't been able to necessarily come with an actual date. But the book is finished. The, the, the concepts is all there. Beautiful. I'm just waiting to put it together. I don't want to just put any old thing out. You know what I'm saying? It got my name on it. So, I'm, you know, we're going to take our time. We're going to clap that up. Yeah, definitely get that a read. You know what I mean? Definitely. All right. All right. And when it's ready, you know, we're going to bring the guard back up. Let him yeah, hold yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah, Be like, yeah, yo, yeah. hurry up and buy. Yeah, because I ain't giving it to Amazon. Or oh, okay. okay. I ain't giving it to them. Got you. You got to get it from me. Yeah, oh. yeah, that's the way Rashid does his shit. Absolutely. That's why I follow, you know, you follow the, the yeah, you burn the trail, you follow it. I've learned a lot, you know, about just appreciating the value of my art from Rashid. So when I had 10 books left of the original hip hop decoded that I put out 15 years ago, I said, these got to go for 100 a stack. Absolutely. And the people, they, they left in three days. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I thought he was bugging. And that was. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was bugging. I was, was like. like <laughs> Facts. He was like, I was like, one hundred dollars. Facts. And he was like, Dad, a hundred. I said, Yo, a hundred dollars. Straight face. I'm not gonna sell these no more. It's the last ten, and the people appreciated that. This yeah. flew out of here. Well, you understand that every artist, when you stay an artist, right? Every artist is, is only as good as the art promoter mm -hmm. or the person who's sponsoring him. Right. Right. They're the one that's gonna go in these dinner parties and be like, "Yo, this shit is the best shit ever." That's why mm -hmm. art dealers are so corrupt. Yeah. That's why the whole art because they they set, art they dealers, set, they the, set the price, yeah, right, right, right? right. So if you you so what happens is with your art, if you set it at a certain standard, and then somebody come along and be like, "You know what? I believe in that shit." That's what it becomes. That's what it becomes. Like, uh, <laughs> who was it? Uh, uh, Nipsey Hussle was selling his mixtapes a hundred dollars for a hundred dollars. Jay Z and bought a whole gang of them. Bought a thousand of them shits. You feel me? Just like I appreciate that work. Yeah. With a straight face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So the, the the price, like you said, what you believe in? Because Diddy just bought a, a living artist, black artist, yeah. worth twenty one million. Who mm -hmm. Alba, Um, which was, what's his name? Um, I'm not sure of his name, but I know Al Diddy. Or one of them. Diddy purchased it, and it was the largest acquire for, of for a, a living, living artist. Yep. Black artist. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It ain't like uh, what's this thing? Bastiat Bas 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 yeah. and shit. So I thought that that was big. But again, like that's always fa I always wondered about that. Like who who determines the how universe? Much? Fuck it. Whatever no, you no, feel, it is. No, but it I'm is. saying like prior to me knowing about how uh, like art dealers get down. You know what I'm saying because if you if you study that, like they really are. That's one of the most like corrupt industries. Like industries because. They get in with an artist or whatever. They go and they all kind of agree that this one is famous. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, we, we're going to rock with him. And I go splash some shit. And they go, oh my God. Well, that, it's not even just what you splash. It's the backstory behind it. Mm -hmm. They selling the backstory. Yeah. yeah. Like I was in the street. And one day some dudes threw hot coffee in my face and I was inspired and then I, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> then I did shit. this yeah. shit and then I did this shit and so it's, this is about the day that the, the bum put the hot Dunkin' Donuts in my face. Yeah, oh, it's oh just, okay. It's just all, I forgot his name, his best son author and he was trying to, like he wrote the manuscript, everybody denied him, right? So he threw it out, committed suicide. No, no, he put it in his drawer, committed suicide because nobody picked up his book. His mother found it, they got it published, he's a bestseller. It's the same book. Same fucking book. Yeah. But yeah. now nah, he's it's, dead. It's, it's a sto exactly. It's a story, it's, it's a story behind it. it. Yeah. Well, well, that's and that's why Jay Z can appreciate a Nipsey Hussle because here it is. He had a good body of work that they took to places and it was like, yo, this shit is garbage. Mm. Right. Right. right and so right. Reasonable doubt. Like, and that's my argument with people about all the when they call about the quote unquote the greatest rappers of, the, of that era, right? Mm-hmm. The reason I'm not a B.I.G. fan because I'm from Brooklyn. Understand mm -hmm. that. There's a bunch of niggas from Brooklyn. I'd be like, the niggas whack. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Beat it. Like, I don't even say Brooklyn no more. Right? Right, right. But B.I.G. is different because of all of the other rappers. So, like, when you think about um, classic albums, right? When you make a classic album, it is very hard to outdo that first classic. Absolutely. Absolutely. You spend your whole life 
sometimes right. trying to outdo that album. So now, I don't know if, it, and that's just my opinion. Life After Death, I mean, Ready to Die is a classic album. Mm -hmm. It was classic. But Life After Death is better than that shit. Mm. Life and Times of Sean Carter ain't better than been Reasonable ain't Doubt. Ain't nothing he, to, to me, Reasonable Doubt. I'm Blueprint? Maybe. Blueprint? Nah. Nah. That reason, that reason, nah. Son, that reasonable yeah. doubt. Nah, that reasonable doubt. It has a. It's it's nostalgic and it's 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 really a. It's it's a romanticized gangster story. Yeah, and I always said <clears throat> he was telling that story from a boss perspective. Right. Yeah. Biggie was telling his shit from on the dirt. He, Biggie you know was telling saying? his shit from from a from a a, a, a thug's perspective, mm -hmm. not a hustler. She's like, there's different types of dudes in the street. You got to do that. Might he sells some crack because somebody got it. And it's, it's coming easy, right? But if, if the, the plug ain't there, he ain't going looking for it. He right. don't know how the first thing no. about it. He couldn't tell you how good the work is or nothing. So now if he lose the plug, he going back to robbing. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. right. That's, that's what B.I.G. Right. talking about. B.I.G. comes from a robbing background. Like right, right. Street <clears throat> robbers. Jay-Z's not a robber. He's like, oh, yeah, I got a pack and, you know, and some fresh sneakers. And, right? and it pops off. Right. Exactly. So now, Illmatic is a classic album. It was written as classic, but it ain't better than Hellmatic. Mm, mm. Feel me? So, how many? How many second? Well, okay. So now, when you look at the Fugees, their first album is not a classic mm -hmm. album. Right, right, right. But the score yeah, is a classic, classic yeah. album. That's a different dynamic, right? You because you grew into that. Yeah, you had to work into that. But a lot of times, that first strike. And a lot of times, because you've been waiting so long to drop that, you know, you get yeah. a lot of dudes. Like for me, the first Wu Tang album, I can hear the hunger. Yeah. I can hear they they ordering pizza, and on the, getting on sleeping these, on the floor. Yeah. On the floor. You, you, can, you can imagine the lint on on the army jacket. Yes, like, yes. <laughs> and sleeping then, on the couch and shit like that. When the W <clears> album <throat> came, I could tell niggas wasn't hungry no more. Not at all. Niggas had all had separate deals. Right, right. Niggas was glossy. I could hear it. In right, the you music. could tell that the, the, it was the, the songs was comprised. Like they had right. to get somebody in the yes, studio. Yeah, they might not have in. been in the studio with right, the other one. Right, and, right. And you could, yeah, the first one you could tell like they were like one was in the booth, one right. was Man, waiting. Wait, like, oh, I'm, he, I'm about to get him. Yeah, I'm about to get him. Yeah, yeah. Hit him with this. Yes. Like I was telling, um, I was telling Eli about uh, "Give Richard Die Trying" because I, I listened to that again and I was like, "Yo, this was Ooh. different." Yeah. Now what's crazy is his first album, "Power of the Dollar," is dope, but it ain't that. But it ain't better than "Richard Die Trying." Richard Die Trying. You feel me? I was like, "Yo, this was just yeah, mean." You can, like you can, you can you feel it. Yeah. So. And so you know that, and so when you talk about, see, because the the whole rap conversation is blurred. What do you? What do you? What are we categorizing? Are you categorizing club music? Because there's some songs that I don't care how ignorant they are. That shit in the club is it's a banger. That shit is life. That shit, yeah, we're facts. <laughs> that shit is life, right? They ain't saying nothing. I couldn't. I can't study to that music. I'm not riding. You know what I'm saying? A, a train ride or, or a plane listening to that shit. Right. And that's the thing. That's the thing about the music and the radio. Like when you start hearing party songs during the daytime, that's a problem. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was a time when it only played certain songs at night. Exactly. Because they were more... Because you're going out, you're getting ready you're to getting go ready out. You're getting ready to get dressed, right. In right. the middle of the day, I don't want to hear no fucking... You're walking trips. You, I don't want to hear that. Right. I'm right. not in the club. I'm mm -hmm. not fitting to wind up on nobody. But in this day and time, it's all... Uh, all, all the time. All the time. And it's vulgar. It's very vulgar. So, I'm listening to Hot 97, <clears throat> and Flex is going in about Pusha T and, and Drake, and... My daughter's in the car, and I'm like, I gotta turn it off because they're talking crazy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. On radio, absolutely, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, there's a time and a place for everything. Facts, and we've got.